Hey, and welcome to High 45, a discussion about the future impact of this week's tech and world news leading towards the singularity. I'm Tristan Grace. I'm Nathan Waters. This is High 45 for... And hive mindy type stuff. And hive mindy type stuff. We've got to put that in as well. Doesn't really flow off the tongue though. Like Not really. High 45, singularity and hive mind podcast <laughs> weekly thing. We'll work it out. There'll be something there. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, sorry we've had so many delays lately. We've just been fucking busy. Like, insanely busy. It's been much fucking... It's, it's just part of the reason why we've been so busy. It's just, yeah, just yeah. non-stop, 24-7. Having to sell ourselves on the streets now. Mm. It's getting to that level. But money's good, but it's... um Yeah, yeah. Well, that's true. You just it's close tiring. your eyes and go to a happier place. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> anyway. You did not um, start with that. You do start with that. Why not? It gets people into the spirit. Because <laughs> uh, this is going to be mind rape. Huh? Um, anyway. Uh, <laughs> pretty good stories. So the one I'm going to start with is uh, the quadricopters. Uh, I've spoken about these before, but now they can actually juggle balls, and it's kind of ridiculous how far UAVs are coming. <laughs> uh, cool. Uh, MIT does a look at the year 2037, like another future video. Uh, uh, yeah. oh. I haven't seen these, so I'm going to be very interested to see what they're about. Um, yeah. Hmm. Uh, next one I've got is about this really cool, like, French jazz tele-robot presence thing. <laughs> And that's a, kind of like an emerging industry right now, and I, I really think it's going to actually take off. So, we'll talk about that. Tele robots. Um, and social bots. Basically, bots infiltrating social networks like Twitter and stuff. Hells yeah. And that's kind of going to be our topic. Like, not sure what to call it. No. We've got an idea on it. But kind of creating, like, putting an algorithm on, say, social interactions online. Because, I mean, if we're saying. I like, I like infiltrating the hive mind. Infiltrating the hive mind. Manipulating the hive mind. True, true. But so turning then, it well, into I guess, science. Yeah, it's turning into a science. That's a good way of putting it. Analyzing networks. Yeah. Because there is an algorithm there, we just don't know it because it's, yeah. you know, social. It's difficult. It is. So, anyway, we can discuss that for the singularity topic. It's okay. pretty awesome because there's a lot of stuff happening with that. Anyway, let's start off with the quadricopter. So here's the video. I'm not sure, have you seen it? Oh, yeah, yeah, I finally got around to watching it. I watched it today. It's absolutely incredible, hey. So uh, what's basically happening, as you can see on the video, is uh, they've now got the quadricopter to recognize the ball, and it's now actually bouncing it back and forth and... Between each other as well. Between each other. So this is just another step up. Like, I know I've spoken about quadricopters. I think this is the third time speaking about it. Third time? Yep. But it's uh, pretty damn they, incredible. They, they, like, they, these are going to take off. They're, they're getting the platform established. As soon as the platform's established, my God, the amount of innovation that's going to happen in regards to these things. Yeah, they drop a few balls, though. Yeah. Although, I was having a discussion earlier on, like, I, I'm very much like, you know, a proponent of like, you know, massive innovation. I mean, we've got UAVs that can have around everywhere. Yeah. But what will actually be their application? Any ideas? <laughs> Any ideas? Are you like... I'm, I'm really struggling, actually, to find it, because I, right. I think there is going to be massive innovation. It's going to change, like, say, the they world. Can, I like, know that. Like, they can, know. like, carry us, like, get beers for us or something. <laughs> How cool would that be? A UAV that goes to a fridge and, like, picks up a beer. So we'll see, we could use my robot that I'm going to speak in the next story to do that. Yeah. Maybe. But just well, these flying ones, like, I mean, for oh, overarching societal, like, you know, in integration or something like that, there's going to be a lot. Well, well, I can think of, like, some? fucking, like, three off the, off the bat. Okay. Um, problem is, the issue is that the, the battery life sucks in the, the moment. Yeah. Like, you can They're fly them for, like, minutes. ten minutes, which is just horrid. And well, then, that's enough to actually go around, like, do something in the yeah. house, do it for you, and then go back and charge. Yeah. So, well, okay, what, what are well, your three? Okay, um, one is uh, blanket Wi-Fi across cities. Oh, no, 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 but I, I mean more in the house, not the, like, a city-wide and all of that, there's got to be oh, a I mean ton of house. use. Yeah, well, because that's all I think really you can do with 10 minutes of it, because you could have, well, like, a station. And... Yeah, well, that's what I'm saying, it's not going to go anywhere until, I don't think in the house there's not going to be a lot of uses. Yeah. Apart from maybe, like, if you do video logging, that could be cool. Mm, that's not bad. You could, like, follow you around with a video. Yeah, I guess it's still... Were, I heard that while I was planning on, like, uh, you know, the Kinos in uh, Universe? Universe, Stargate Universe, yeah. yeah. They were actually planning on making real-life ones of those for the ISS. Oh, that's awesome. Because oh, they, yeah, they, they can just float around. around. And they just had little fans that just, like, ah. do it to where it needs to go. Awesome. Um, yeah, we said before that if, if they actually got the battery power and they could actually lift d decent loads, I mean, you could actually have, um, you know, blanket... Uh, you know, cities with these things, and they could, you know, have emergency Wi-Fi and Wi-Fi wherever you wanted. They could actually go and record real-life events, yeah. like real-life streaming of any events, or even, like, uh, real-time Google Maps with video. Well, that's obviously or, the, the big thing where it's going to go with it. Or I transporting mean, stuff, picking up stuff, and taking yeah. them to wherever it needs to go. They've already got yeah. it with some of the police stations. I think spoke about it before, like, in, um, in Texas, they've got a few of the 
dual police and forces have like kind of the UAVs with the oh, camera yeah, and stuff. Yeah. I know we spoke about that before. Military applications. Yeah. I, I'm just trying to see, like, I know this is going to become open. You can already control the state on your iPad and do a lot of things with it. I just think this platform is going to be incredible. It's just, it's oh. difficult to imagine like all of the scenarios that'll happen because you've got a flying platform. Home movies. No, that's not a bad idea. And sex tapes. Definitely sex tapes. You don't that need a third person well. anymore. You just yeah. have the quadcopter that just goes around and just records it. You Red Shoe should totally buy this. I mean, that'll exactly. work well for them. That's where the money's going to go. That's true. Well, if you guys have like any ideas about where this can go, like, I mean, the platform's nearly the established house. there. What, yeah. In the house, like, I mean, there's a lot you can think about, say, for like, you know, citywide, but we're going to need a different propulsion system there. I don't think the quadricopters with electricity can work because they can't stay up long enough. These are more like, you know, little bits. Yep. I don't know. I'm very excited about this, but it's struggling to actually come up with what it's going to emerge from it, but there is going to be stuff from it, even if it's just kids' yeah, toys and more um, crazy stuff. But, anyway. Hmm. Mm -hmm. What have we got here? Um, I found this off a, a cool blog that Ted actually links to. Uh, Ted? Ted's, I like Ted. Ted Susan? I think he's, he's oh, right, not the site ted.com. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> when I searched for his name in Facebook, because I was like, I remember he posted this really cool link and I was like, I'm going to go check it out. Typed in Facebook, Ted, and it came up as Ted. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I'm like, oh, no, wrong one! <laughs> ah, damn it! <laughs> Maybe it's the same. Um, it's called yeah, grinding.be, which doesn't sound anything like futurism, but it's pretty cool. Um, And they found this off another guy called Stuart Futurist Candy. Anywho. <laughs> Futurist Candy. Yeah. <laughs> Anywho, it's uh, MIT's Future Freight Flows, which makes yeah, no sense at all. Fast. Yeah. <laughs> it's basically, they've come up with uh, four different uh, future scenarios for the year 2037. And they are... Ooh, give oh, me an e explanation of what they quickly are. I didn't watch all of them, I only watched the technology one. Oh, okay, well, what is the they, technology? Because they did one, they've got one on like Global Marketplace, uh, NAFTA, something about NAFTA, uh, Technology Saviour, and One World Order. Oh, okay. So the technology one's pretty cool. They they basically just go through, um, like, it, it's as though you're like watching this, this screen. So it's like you log into your terminal. You log into your terminal and right. today you've got all these recommended content from all your friends and oh, yeah, 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 blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah. so you log in and it's like it starts off like this 238 of your colleagues have said you should definitely watch this video for your meeting tomorrow type thing right so that's kind of like a recommendation system type, yeah, yeah. type thing um they're pretty big on they, they start off the whole video with like um you know everything's pretty much solved because of technology yeah i mean we've got all our energy resources there's kind of like portable nuclear power just everywhere in everyone's houses um they have a big emphasis on 3D printing as well, which is pretty cool. That's good. And I thought that was actually interesting because it's kind of along the same lines we've thought of before. Of you have like you know regional based 3D printing uh, stations mm. where you just you know you can go print off a car at, you know down the road somewhere to your 3D printing station and um, get it around. Yeah. And even saying like uh, the even saying things like the US's main in export is uh, digital goods. Well, I think it, it must be Stuff close like that. to that now. You'd think. Well, and information goods, I guess. Yeah. That's kind of cool. So it's a pretty cool video. Like, definitely check it out and uh, have a look at the other That's ones cool. as well. I haven't checked out the other ones. I, I would I'd be interested to see the, the one or the older one. Like, I, I obviously haven't seen any of these. It's, but just, I mean, yeah. going around the whole, like, you know, I mean, I think that's going to be a massive thing to actually change in the next few years because of everyone being online and all citizen journalism and uh, the rise of Facebook, you know, the nation state of Facebook. Not having uh, one controlling platform. Well, yeah, because, I mean, the government should be just, you know, an influencer rather than the actual dictating thing. And it's especially we're set up that way in the West. Well, so. it should be a platform and have no mm. other say in it. Really. Yeah, that's it. That's the platform to just allow the basic operations. The society. That'd yeah. be kind of cool. So, yeah. yeah. Check out the video. Really, really cool. And it's MIT as well. Yeah. Excellent. And it's, you know, the production value is pretty, uh, <laughs> it's pretty, it's, like, it's not bad for, like, a, I'm guessing it's just the MIT kids have, like, put it together or something. Uh, kids. kids. Yeah, that's lovely. It's like that guy, you show him rub him on the head. Oh, you cute little. Well, they are. They're dirty. They're not in the real world. They get to play with all this shit and get funding from it from various sources. Indeed. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> uh, well, next up. I'm just bitching. You're just bitching. Bitch. Next up is this awesome, awesome, awesome little robot. Uh, which it is... Looks retarded. I know, it does, doesn't <laughs> it? It's just absolutely stupid. But this is this robot called... Oh, I shouldn't actually hit play. I should actually have a look. Well, it's called the, the Gostai Jazz, Jazz Telebot. Now, the basic idea of it is kind of similar to a quadricopter, as I was speaking about before. 
it, it kind of, uh, it, it goes around the house. It goes around the office, actually. They're going more the office angle. Mm -hmm. And you can actually interact and do video conferencing, like, say, with the robot. Because someone just goes, jumps onto the robot, and then the robot goes oh, over so there. Oh, that's telepresence bot. Yeah, telepresence. It, it, exactly. And they're actually going for, like, you know, the more human look-like and all of that. But it's uh, really fantastic, like, just all the different applications. So here we can see right here, it's like, you know, the robot coming in. Stalking. Well, yeah, that's it. And so then they're sitting down at the computer and you can actually speak in and it can be like a third person at the conversation. Uh, so it can give you more autonomous control like if you're speaking with someone, say, you know, on the other side of the ocean. Oh. Okay. And it, it, I, I don't know. I, I think this is really just a beginning thing here because uh, uh, as cool. they go into later on, it's for security. They've just got these bots going around. It's yeah. keeping the security. Well, you, you've seen the uh, telepresence, the other ones with the big screen? Yeah, well, yeah, actually, they've got they're, that they're, comparison. They're, they're kind of the big one. These ones actually look a lot cooler, like... Yeah, well, they've got the comparison between the others because these are actually really big at the moment. Like, this thing is valued at 10,900 US, what? I'm guessing. And they've got all these others that, you know, are just pretty much the, the moving around, like, uh, what are those robot calls? iRobots with, like, you know, an iPad on this end. Yeah. And they've got it that way. Um, and then they just travel around. But, again, this is really like a beginning industry. And I think this is going to really start taking off because, yeah. I mean, imagine you have an office going there. It's all straight. You want, like, some security afterwards. You put that, you know, tell your robot thing there. Or imagine, say, you've got two offices. Like, let's say, like, you know, we've got our office here and then, say, there's another office up in Sydney. You want to interact between it. Sure, you can do the Skype thing, but it'd be kind of pretty awesome to, like, you know, you have this robot traveling around and you just you log onto the robot yeah. and you've got your video coming through there. You're like, yo, dude, what's going on? I'm not sure. I still think it's still very gimmicky. I still think there needs to be some other application to make it more yeah. realistic. And well, like, I think it, it will start mer usable. morphing into that way because even if you look at these different ones here, they've all started like, you know, just with the screen and not very human-like, mm. but it's actually morphing more and more towards this human version of the robot. Yeah, I like that one. And so it could actually, we could actually be moving towards that angle. Like this might be the way how we get the robots in our house. Cause I mean, it's not far to think that like establish this as a platform and actually give it like, you know, a grasping mechanical hand. Hey robot, go get yeah. me a beer. <laughs> so, <laughs> sure, yeah, sir, yeah. I will do that now. Oh, you <laughs> <laughs> and it could be great. I mean, like, if, I mean, we've already got the connect, you know, the stuff that way. The voice recognition is pretty say, good. Ten thousand dollars? Fuck that! Just get a Roomba, stick a broomstick in it, and shove a connect iPad, head yeah. on top. Yeah, connect like, to an iPad. Yeah. Why would you? <laughs> that's retarded. There's absolutely no freaking way that should be ten thousand dollars. It is because it's integrated it's all all together. Shit. It's just like they're trying to establish the platform. One of these guys, oh. like, I mean, if this is already being saturated this much, as if there's already this amount there. Someone is going to establish a platform and it's going to be open up and then yeah. this is going to boom. This is going to be crazy. But I really think we're seeing the beginning of the evolution of the personal home robot here. And it might start in offices, which I hadn't considered, but I mean, there's no real reason why it couldn't. So, Willow yeah. Garage should actually make one. Yes, Willow Garage should. Have you heard of Willow Garage? I, was, I, I was like, I had to just, <laughs> just search it. They, they made the, uh, the, the got, they got the Ross operating system, robot operating system. Oh, we spoke we about that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's yeah, the open source. They're, they're really pushing, yeah, open yeah. source. Because... I mean, if you just get the hardware together, make cheap hardware, and then just make the rest open source yes. and allow people to hack it. Yes, yes, yes. Because the problem with these guys, they're all, I'm guessing they're doing proprietary Very hardware, proprietary, proprietary software, mm. and that's just... Well, they still need the platform, because I, I still don't think this is too bad, because you still need with the hardware. The main problem with the hardware stuff is to actually yeah. find out what's useful, to what actually has all the benefits there. And that's what they're trying to work out at the moment. I've got all these different ones here, but as soon as they work out the base necessities that are needed in the hardware, then they open source it, and then they get the massive innovation. Yeah, so it's whoever wins the hardware battle first. I yeah, guess. that'll be it. As soon as they establish yeah. that system and then they can do the whole, like, you know, Windows platform, we would just sell the software or yeah. you can even go the Apple way, but it's more expensive, I guess. Anyway. The, the, the hovercopter, I think, for uh, video logging, like, life logging. Yeah. If you well, just hovered around you the whole time. Exactly. That'd be awesome. Well, see, this is very similar to it. Like, the, the quadricopter is the, you know, the, the flying version of this, whereas this is the uh, actual on-the-ground Android version. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, keep, keep your cool. head out for this because this is going to keep on a changing like crazy. Well, I th I'm, I'm going to put my chips behind that this is the evolution of the personal robot. We're seeing the beginning of it right now, so. Fingers mm. crossed. You don't agree? You don't think this is the beginning of the I, evolution? I guess it probably is because I guess you first start. These are just Roombas with sticks on them. Yeah. Was basically. Essentially. <laughs> and now they're, they're going up and they've got sticks. Next up, they'll have arms to grab things. Yeah. And. That's, that's, why, that's what I mean. That's why yeah. I think these are the, the beginning of the evolution. It's like we're seeing our um, first prototype of robots. Yeah, it's like they're yeah. with, the, with the, qu the quadricopter, you know, they're bouncy. We've had that idea before of like, how cool would it be if you just had a hand, like just that much, sitting like a robotic hand sitting on a desk that you could just throw a ball to, it'll yeah, catch it. Yeah, throw it back. And it'll throw it back. 
Like, that would be, like... That'd be fun. You could be, sell that as a toy. Like, you know, 50 bucks for that, you have to throw a spe 50, specific... You charge $500 for that. No, no, but you get it down to toy level. Yeah. I mean, why not have it, like, you get it cheaper... But there's a lot of series. mechanics. It's, it's a robotic arm. It's a full-on yeah. operating robotic arm. It needs, like, three prongs. <laughs> Catch the ball. It'd be so Wee. awesome, though. I'd yeah. like that. Anyway, I spoke mm -hmm. a lot about that, but yes, we'll move on. Oh, it could, it could be like the, the thing off Red Dwarf, the scutters with the hand. I haven't watched Red Dwarf. Oh, no! No, no Craig just shot down. Shame. Shame. <laughs> okay, what's your one? Uh, fake tweets by a social bot full hundreds of followers. Ooh, Ooh I like yeah. that title. Yeah, it's New Scientist. <laughs> oh. You know, well, well, well known for their uh, journalistic expertise. Mm -hmm. They're not too bad. Okay. They, they just sensationalize a few things, but they've got good stuff. Yeah. So uh, this is what this is about is um Hey let me start again. <laughs> <laughs> okay. What this is about is uh basically researchers are trying to create uh bots, like software bots like Chatterbot and all that, but actually um put them out into social networks like Twitter and just have them just go and just on their own. Awesome. And so I uh, just you know, post out their own tweets, add their own followers, you know, build up their own networks and stuff. Um and so they've actually uh, they, there's two stories here. There's one about how I don't know, it's just the same story. They're basically saying that researchers last year they actually uh, created software that can impersonate human Twitter users. But they were talking about this uh, specific one where this guy actually just by accident he just he was a PhD student at uh, University of Torino, and he was analyzing a social network that does discussion of books, and he basically just created a little like a little crawler. Uh, Software to actually crawl the connect the, all the network, yeah. work out the network map, and work out who the influencers were, were and how everyone interconnected. Right. And then he created this bot and basically just set it up and you know added a bit of programming, whatever you do with it, and let it go. And it's now got like over seventy followers. It's received over two thousand messages, and it's actually one of the most popular members in the network. That's insane. Like, it's probably a small little social networking site, but um, the idea of actually doing this of actually having a bot that just goes, you know, you just let it go and it actually just works out and analyzes all the, the network, identifies the influencers, identifies scientifically and accurately what content will actually get people interested, like yeah. say get likes on Facebook or get more followers on Twitter or get retweets on Twitter. And if you could actually analyze that and just have it automatically do it, this thing could fucking control people. Like it could... This is awesome. This is the beginning of it'd it. It'd be awesome. It'd be amazing. And that's pretty much our, our topic in a sense, I guess. Yeah. I don't know what you want to call it. Well, let's it, merge that into the topic, I guess. Yeah. So we, we've talked a bit about this before. Um, just kind of, you know, you know, evil take over the world type, you know, talks as you generally do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm always the most humanitarian. I'm bullshit. I am. I am the nicest person you'll ever meet. It's going to be the most positive outcome for the human species. Our ideas always are like, well, you can take over the world with this. Then it's always like, well, you could, and then we're like, well, we should do it first, and then stop people from taking you over the world. <laughs> so that, that there's logic here. There is power, absolute power crops, absolutely. So we're, we're going to. I want. I'll decentralize the system before it gets too powerful. Yeah, but by doing I that, it actually creates it. more power because decentralizing your hand. Oh, I give the power to the masses. Oh, uh, right. Power to the <laughs> just like Stalin. <laughs> <laughs> just like Stalin. Yes. Communism doesn't Fuck work. You. Oh, okay. <laughs> comparing me to Stalin. I'm comparing you to Stalin. Okay, Works you're well. Hitler. <laughs> Fine, why not? I'll be Stalin if you're Hitler. Sure, okay. I, I, I wouldn't mind being Hitler, I can be Mao. Oh, I like Hitler, works. I can be a combination. Anyway, off topic. <laughs> <laughs> Let, I, I love this idea, I love this actual thing that I, actually what we're doing now, like you know, creating algorithms, creating robots to actually crack the human algorithm, because what we're doing it is we're putting it into the algorithms yeah. that we use like on the day, or every day, say Facebook or say Twitter. We only retweet certain things, we only like like certain things, we only reblog certain stuff on Tumblr, we only upvote certain things on Reddit. Why not actually create a robot that can actually start saying, look, these are the outcomes that you want. You want to retweet, you want to reblog, you want an upvote, you want to yeah. like, get those, and uh, you will do well. You will own the network. Yeah, that's it. Just <laughs> give them that that thing. And I mean, even if you could use like some more evolutionary algorithms or anything like that that just keeps on changing. It's whatever, it's just all data, really. I know. Oh. <laughs> this is the very beginning of it, though. I mean, the very fact that this like PhD student is able to do this and actually able yeah. to create content that others like. I mean, this is the very beginning of the recommendation engine, the very beginning of actual yeah. computers creating and 
well, Just orchestrating our yeah. world and discovering the algorithm that runs us all of runs us. us yes exactly I mean we have a, um, we, we're, exactly. we have an algorithm each of us has an individual algorithm you combine them all together and we're working as a computer we're a yeah. computing shit yeah. it's just because none of that's recorded, no one knows what it is yet, and it's so complex and interrelated, and it's very... Ugh. Well, it's very blank. You can't actually see the, in, the, the connections and see it all going no. that way. You can see the connections now, but you can't see how the algorithm's working. It's still very much a, a black box, but as the computers are getting powerful, they're able to actually, like, you know, peel away and make it better. Yeah. I mean, it's and one of the, like, the last frontiers, really. Yeah. It's great. And so the things we've, uh, we've talked about before is, like, um, with all these, uh, say, look, Facebook's a perfect example. Like, we, we overanalyze Facebook far too much. Um, pretty much your feedback mechanism right now is your likes. Everyone can, set, tends to either consciously or unconsciously want to get more likes. And so their, their behavior and with posting, what they actually post, the content they post, how they interact with other people, the comments they post on other, other stories, tends to go in a certain direction, which I think is rather predictable. Hmm. Because they're always after likes. Like, if, for example, if you post a comment or a status update and it doesn't get any likes, like, you're not likely to post that particular piece of content again, because yeah. unle unless you're very, you know, dedicated to whatever you're talking about. Yeah. But like, and so the, the problem with that, you're getting all the, the funny jokes and stuff, but like, whatever. That's Shallow. Important. But then you, you start, it's starting to emerge into other things, kind of like links and kind of like yeah. sharing interesting stories that you think, hey, my friends would like this. And if, if people are getting trained by Facebook, because I mean, yeah. like we say, <laughs> we've got our own algorithm. That algorithm's constantly changing, like, you know, evolutionary algorithms. Influenced oh. by others. Uh, influenced by others. We're like, hey, this got a lot of likes. This is actually working well. I'll keep on posting this. I'll do that there. I mean, the greatest example is go through your Facebook history. Actually watch how you've changed, how your actual posting, yeah. how your digital persona has actually adjusted over the years, because it's quite significant. And even memes oh, spread the same it. way. Like, oh, like yeah. the Friday video, like... It, it's only, if people only ever started posting that because others started liking it. I think. Yeah. And because uh, it's, yeah. Yeah. And I, I think Friday is a little bit of a different example just because it's oh, so I've actually amazing. Been, I've actually, <laughs> I love Friday. My it's God. Lyrical genius. It yeah. is. It's a modern day Shakespeare. I've actually been a bit kind of, I analyzed that a little bit. It's like, you know how songs, you know how with, with songs you might love a song, but if you, you share it to friends, they like, yeah, they're like, like, oh, yeah. not really. <laughs> yeah. And so particularly with songs, you don't really, I mean, they've got that 30 day song challenge thing on at the moment where everyone's posting their favorite song. You haven't seen that? Like, no, no, no. But um, like posting normal songs is probably, eh, but posting the funny songs, that could be why the internet's kind of made it's like well. all these funny weird songs like, um, was it uh, Lonely Islands, like I'm on a boat and... Oh, yeah. And all those other songs. I think that's probably why they've gotten so much more popular. Anyway, yeah. that's kind of a topic, but yeah. Yeah. Well, so, I mean, this, where is this actually going to go for? Like, what, what's the... I'm not going to say end game, because I think this is a perpetual thing that's always going to change. What, what, yeah. what would you say is, say, a 10-year or 20-year thing? Is it going to be similar to this? Are we going to see robots infiltrating all of our social networks? Or what do you think is going to happen? Mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not helpful, is it? I well, think it, I what think do you think, think the trends are, I, I guess, towards... Do, do you think the trends are towards more of this? Do you think more pages and, say, like, how websites at the moment are, like, you know, they're trying to use, say, Facebook and Twitter to actually post content. Do you yeah. think there'll be maybe intelligent systems and inter intelligent algorithms that will use that more? That's where I'm kind of feeling it might work towards, because then the, yeah, yeah. the intelligent algorithm could actually start interacting with, say, people. Like, say, if you're a fan of... just going to toss a website out there, like, you know, cracked.com. You yeah. know, it's a comedy site. It's, it's pretty cool. I'm a big fan of it. Like, if they actually started interacting, even if it is just a, like, you know, a machine, you could actually start making jokes and have fun yeah, with that. And, and you program in an agenda. Yeah, that. that's it. The agenda would be, like, get more links to the get site or get more likes. Get data more... or something. Or, yeah. or learn more about the person you're actually yeah, interacting with. Yeah, that's true. That's a good one. Because I was just thinking, like, that's why... That's a scary one. I what, like what, it. What's the point in really having bots? Like, if they... Because mm. if they're invisible, then, like... Like, yeah, you, yeah. you wouldn't have, like, most people wouldn't... They most wouldn't be infiltrated by all these bots. There wouldn't be too many, I don't think. But right, have, right. I think you'd have a few maybe that would actually try and uh, interact with people and try and learn more from them yeah. to, for a specific means to actually work out what their specific motives and behaviours and values and yeah. everything is so they can actually manipulate it and use it to yeah. whoever's advantage it is. That's, yeah. well, I mean, that could be definitely a big thing with, say, the people that are like 100,000 followers on Facebook or so, that to actually get as much interaction there, to actually learn about as most people going there, to actually yeah. stylize their posts and submissions to those groups to actually get the most response. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I mean, they've already got <laughs> the feedback. I, I really feel that they've got everything they need. All they need to do now is optimize. It's like it's only like Likes and comments. two years off, I think. Yeah, I think so. And that's scary because they... Yeah. We could have like anonymous bots and people actually being influenced by... 
yeah, algorithms other are not other knowing. people. This is why I love to just analyze. I'm actually, I, I'll, I'll show you. Um, <laughs> I found a few things I've found lately. There's this one thing called Node Excel, which is like an Excel cool. add-on tool, which I'm sure there must be something better. But it, it, you actually put in a search term and you can actually create giant network maps oh, of okay. everyone in, like, say, Twitter and I think other networks as well. Hell's and you yeah. can actually identify the social influencer. Hell yeah. that, That's the biggest thing with all these stuff. There's always, in one network, there's always, like, the alpha person, the, the social influencer, where if they say this thing is cool, then yeah. everyone else is like, oh, my God, it must be cool. Kevin Rose. Yeah. It's a good example. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there's this other video that was pretty cool. Um, the latest RSA Animate. You know, oh, yeah, yeah I love them. Uh, it's called The Internet oh. in Society, Empowering and Censoring Citizens. Oh, I can't wait. I thought you And that, that was pretty good. Uh, what, actually, what they go through is like, oh, you know, in, the internet's so amazing right now for like, say, all the uh, repressive ra people in repressive regimes because they can get their word out and it's so amazing. It's helping, you know, democracy spread around the world. But on the flip side, it's actually helping repressive regimes monitor everything that's happening yeah. within their country and they're actually allowing they're, they're specifically encouraging and allowing people to post whatever like allowing blogs in those countries because then they can monitor what's happening yeah and can then they can react going. to it and then they can well speaking yeah. along those lines uh, i forget it now but it's uh, um there was one instead of people posting on twitter for one of the revolutions wow i butchered this uh, it was instead they were posting on this other website on um, libya Lib it might have been libya it might have been one of the other ones like tunisia it was or a something. dating site it was a dating site, yeah, 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 yeah. The, uh, like a tiny dating site. So instead of actually posting through Twitter, they posted through that, and that was how they got their information through. Yeah, well, that was kind I of. I think sweet. that was Libya. Might have been. I'm, I'm not sure. Or Tunisia. One of them. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a lot recently. Yeah. And actually, I thought it was really cool. Like, I mean, sure, you've got like you know the big ones where everyone's monitoring and watching, but yeah. you could have some kind of closed forums or something like that where it's a little bit harder. But I mean, they're not infallible. Yeah. But anyway, with the, the future of all the all this stuff going there, that I mean, we're going to see these everywhere, and I, I think it's going to begin with actual corporations and stuff monitoring, say, Facebook pages or with all of these followers, because they've now got a ton of people. They're getting likes. They're getting that there. That's what they want to focus on. Yeah. Give us this result. Give us more likes. Give us more comments. Produce an algorithm to actually make that happen, and that's only going to lead to more and more robots actually it's cracking more. the human algorithm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And then, then we really do become a computer. That's it. Then we can actually... That's a, another step towards the merging. Yeah, well, that's... Yeah. <laughs> be pretty cool. You're not a hive mind until you can actually say, look, that's a hive mind. Yeah. This person interacts with that person by this, and that's how... That, that, well, I mean, you, you can start getting more and more. I mean, after we've got the actual businesses doing all that, you could actually start creating a total virtual friend. Yeah. Great. There's also a service that I just saw released, which is uh, getting a bit of buzz just from the whole crazy factor. They'll actually create you a Facebook girlfriend. And actually doing <laughs> the interactions and all the Facebook posts <laughs> nice. and stuff. So we're starting to see the rise of artificial friends and sex partners online. <laughs> Fun. That would be awesome. Well, that's actually... Sorry, let's just finish on the last point. That's actually the thing that we mentioned before. That the funny thing is, and no one fucking notices or, or takes note of this, is that more people interact for far like more, greater, like greater lengths of time with your Facebook persona than they do with your actual physical real world persona, if that makes sense. So you're, because Facebook is pretty much that's that's you, that's your portrayal of you. If you say you know you you love this, then people will be like, oh, they must love that. That's that's the perception that you give off. That's your digital kind of personality that people associate. That is you. So I guess you're arguing that what you post on Facebook goes out to more people than what you actually do in real life most of the time. No, no, just not any more people, but. Uh, people interact far more often with your digital persona than they do with you. Hmm. Like, we have, we have friends who live, like, near us, and they probably... We don't see them as much in physical life as they probably do in... On so the Facebook, Facebook, actually commenting and talking that way. And that is, like, that is... There is something there that's just insanely... That, that's doing something. That, that, that's... That's, um, fucking with something. I don't yeah. know what it is. That's fucking with some kind of social... Yeah. Perception of reality and psychology yeah. and yeah <laughs> I'm, I'm horrible with words that could have been an awesome quote that could have been like put on my gravestone or something like future generations could have quoted that just so amazingly but they may no. still uh, just not in the I right give you way. permission to just arrange the words in a better way and, and just put my name at the end saying you know spoken by Nathan Waters excellent yeah like a dirty potter or dirty harry on youtube Search for that, it's very funny. <laughs> they remixed Harry Potter to be very uh, adult oriented. Uh, <laughs> anyway, we'll catch you next week. It's been a uh, high 45 for March, end of March. Yep. 
Indeed. So, catch you now. I'm Tristan Grace. I'm Nathan Waters. See you next week. Yes. Indeed. Yes. <laughs>